Okay, from the last video we got the equation a equals negative omega squared x. Now, this is the defining formula. But what it can tell us a couple of things. One is that um, if x goes positive, then your acceleration is opposing it. It's negative. Okay, because of that constant there. Well, the negative constant. Um, but also we find that the size of it is proportional. Okay, so if you uh, have twice x, then you'll have twice a, but in the opposite direction. So from that formula, we have uh, the definition of SHM. Essentially, a body will be undergoing simple harmonic motion if its acceleration is directed. towards the equilibrium and also if it's proportional to the displacement of the body from the point. So essentially, you have to remember that if you had an object and you had an equilibrium point and you moved it to the side, then there must be a force back towards the centre and that in case makes an acceleration towards the centre. So X and F, or X and A, are opposing each other, but they are proportional in size. And we know that from a spring, if you extend a spring, a certain extension x, then it'll be proportional, because remember the equation f equals kx. So to summarize from before, a equals negative omega squared x. If we graphed it, a versus x, and you'll have a line going down in a negative gradient. And what's the actual gradient value? It's negative omega squared. Okay, so we can represent these uh, equations we've found in the last video graphically. So let's start looking at the displacement equation. X equals A sine omega t. Okay, now we're going to have X on the Y axis, time on the X, X axis. What's the maximum value you can get to? What's the minimum value you can get to? Well, it's going to be a is your maximum and minus a is the minimum because sine is either 1 or negative 1. And if we actually look at our times, well, let's have a quarter of a period, half a period, whoops, over 2, 3 quarters of a period, and a period. So if we now put in the line, remember sine starts from 0, and essentially it will be something like that. But a nice sine curve, not what I've done. If we look at, now if we look at velocity, okay, velocity equals a omega cos omega t. Whoops, cos omega t, sorry, it's a bit of a shocker. We're doing velocity, time, period, period, over 2. You can do the other ones if you want to. Now, what are the maximum and minimum values? Okay, if you look at this, well, cos can either be 1 or minus 1. So it's either going to be 1 times a omega or negative 1 times a omega. So those are your maximums. And what's the shape of the graph? Well, it's a cosine graph. And what else could we do? We could do a equals... So your acceleration, what is that equal again? Negative a omega squared sine omega t. Okay, so we're doing acceleration versus time. There's a period over 2. There's a period. What's the max and minimum in this case? Remember, maximum sine can be is 1 minus 1. So it's over a omega squared or minus a omega squared. Now the key here is this is a negative 
Okay, so if we have a positive um, essentially on the omega t, then we're going to have a negative answer. So in this case, it's opposite to your displacement vector. It's going down like that. And this is just a note to remember angular frequency, which we've done in topic 1. Omega is also called the angular frequency of the motion, and it's 2 pi over t. Okay, so this is angular velocity, angular frequency, and remember it's 2 pi over t or 2 pi f. Now on that last slide we're looking at the graphs. Okay, so just remember with a mass, okay, if that's the equilibrium position, as it's going through the equilibrium position, it will have maximum velocity, but there will be zero extension, so there will be no force, so there's no acceleration. Okay, that's when it's going through the equilibrium. However, once it's down, let's say down the bottom here, okay, it will have the max force up, okay, it will have zero velocity, and also have max acceleration. Okay, and you can see that they're opposing the displacement. So the displacement's down and the force and acceleration are opposing that. So a notion swell moves up and down with SHM. The swell is an amplitude of 3 meters, a frequency of 0.25 hertz. What is the period of the SHM? So period equals 1 over F, you can find it just like that. What is the angular frequency of the SHM? So you could either use omega equals 2 pi f or 2 pi over t. What is the maximum vertical velocity of the water and where does it occur? Okay, well maximum vertical velocity will be when it's going through the equilibrium position. If you look at the graphs, you notice it's a cos graph, so it's when it's going through the equilibrium position. So how do you find it? Well, we know that velocity is equal to a omega sine, oh sorry, cos omega t. Okay, the maximum of this term can be is one. Okay, so if we make it equal to one, then velocity is just equal to a omega. So you just put in the amplitude of three times your answer to omega. What's the maximum acceleration? Where does it occur? The maximum acceleration is either at the very bottom or the very top because that's where the greatest tension is to bring it back towards the middle. Greatest force. So what's this formula? A equals negative A omega squared X something 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 that will be equal to 1 at maximum. So if you just put in some values negative 3 times omega squared. Now when you do this one be aware that it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive the actual value will be maximum at the bottom or the top. Write down the equation for displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the water. So I'll just do the first one. x equals a sine omega t. So what you do is just put in the values. 3 sine, then put in your value of omega, and multiply it by t. And you could do the others too. And then using your formulas from the last page, the one with the values in it, so in other words, for amplitude it'll be 3 sine and whatever your omega is, and then you multiply that by 1.2. Okay, and you can work that out for the displacement. Then just substitute it for velocity and acceleration. Okay, so we're going to do a last sort of formula for another formula for velocity, one where you don't need to know time. If you just knew that where you are, you could find the velocity. So if you knew a time, you could use your a omega cos omega t, but this one here will tell you the velocity knowing a displacement. So let's start off with v equals a omega cos omega t. Now, there's a trigger density that you should, well, you don't have to know it, but I'll tell you it. Cos squared omega t plus sine squared omega t is equal to 1. In other words, cos squared theta is plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. It's a trigger density. Now in that case, if we substitute all that in for cos omega t, we'll get v equals plus or minus a omega square root 
1 minus sine squared omega t. Okay, so I've substituted that in for cos m omega t. Okay, you can work out how that works yourself. So the square roots essentially to account for the fact that we're substituting a cos squared omega t for a cos omega t. Okay. Now also we know this their maximum displacement, oh sorry, the displacement is equal to plus minus a sine omega t. And if you rearrange that, you can get sine omega t equals x over a. So, sine omega t equals x over a. So, x squared over a squared is equal to sine squared omega t. So, v equals plus or minus a omega square root 1 minus x squared over a squared. Okay. Expand that out by multiplying um, both things in the brackets by a squared. Okay, and it leaves you with the final formula. V equals plus minus omega square root a squared minus x squared. There's your formula. That will tell you the velocity knowing a displacement x. In the Putting it in for this example here, from the previous example, find the velocity of the water when it's displaced 2 metres from the equilibrium point. So you're just going to substitute into that equation. And I think you get plus minus 3.5 metres per second, hopefully.